My name is Priya Mishra and I run a foundation called Hempwati in India for the last four years. I'm India's first female cannabis activist and I have been lobbying for the same uh, with the ministry, between the citizens, patients, doctors and many more professionals. It has been a tough fight like everyone else, like all the other women around the globe and my heart and my love goes out to all of you who have actually, you know, stopped their life just to help others who can actually benefit from the plants because we did. I got saved because of cannabis. I had lymph node tuberculosis which was cured only because of this plant wherein I had, I had already reached the third stage. Today I sit in front of you and talk with a smile is only because of this plant. Indians have always considered cannabis as something which is pure, something which is sacred because their ultimate god, Shiva, who is known as Mahadev, which literally means the god of the gods. It's his favorite plant. You cannot do any ritual or any puja of this particular god without having cannabis leaves on it. Our, our scriptures like Ayurveda not just talk about the plant but sing glories of it. The Sanskrit name of cannabis is Vijaya. Vijaya means the one who's victorious, the one who's never defeated. Isn't it true for cannabis as well? We have over 50,000 uses of this particular plant. I am hoping that more and more people would get up, more and more women would get up because cannabis is known as a female plant, right? The ones which give the buds and move on. So it's only a woman who can actually do this, who understands the meaning of life how important it is and how difficult it is to give one. And hence, the people who are trying to monetize, just like in India, for the past four years, the medicines haven't come into mainstream. Is not because of other pharmaceutical companies or because uh, the ministry is not helping or the government is not helping. They all are very helpful if you give them the information. For the past four years, they have been put in the dark and said that no, uh, we still need to research more if cannabis can be helpful or no. Now, I really want to ask these people, uh, how about the first world countries who have spent uh, over 300 to 500 billion dollars on the research with over lakhs of patients uh, who have not just recovered, cured, healed, but are helping further? Well, just like uh, all the other women around the globe, I have had my share of difficulties. Fortunately, not with the system. The system has been very helpful in understanding how it can be done. But among the peers of the, uh, you know, of the industry, who are, again, as I said, not letting the first world technology or the first world medicine system to come to India and tell them that, you know, we have taken this particular thing from you. You know, the father of medicinal cannabis, uh, who uh, wrote uh, cannabinoids as therapeutics. The first entire chapter is dedicated to India. Why is that? Well, because in our systems, in our scriptures, in our uh, you know religious sacrament everywhere our uh, being would be incomplete without this particular plant and yet we sit over here with uh, just a few states just a couple of them that i can count in one hand uh, being legal for medicinal and industrial purposes i'm hoping the people who are barring it would come forward and tell uh, the reason or give the reason why they are doing uh, the same Having said that, I won't give up my fight, just like all of you. And uh, I send a lot of uh, love and a big hug to all the women out there who are fighting for this particular plant. The first paper was made out of it. The first cloth was made out of it. Women were the first one who were clothed, weren't we? So in that case, we definitely owe a lot more to the plant. The plant has always uh, been you know the plant has always been considered uh, very sacred as i told you in the indian culture until the 1900s we had you know we had cannabis growing everywhere in our seaweed drills in our backyard and no one really bothered for a simple fact people used to use it when they had fever when they had stomach ache when they had diarrhea when they had tetanus toxins in their body when they had tuberculosis all the therapies or all the methods to cure the same is given in Ayurveda with the help of this particular plant. Well, you know, when uh, there's a uh, there's a report, there's a book called British Hemp Commission Report, which was made in India in the late 1800s. That is the time when they wanted to launch allopathy and English alcohol. 
you know the the imported liquor when uh, you know when uh, a person who uh, is wanting to introduce chemicals in a country what do they go after the first thing the most organic thing that will actually put an end to all of that that was this particular plan and that very clearly is written in the 3500 pages book as well you can go and download it yourself and read it i did and my eyes opened because in that report as well, all the doctors and everyone said that though they were scared for the sanity of uh, Indians by using this particular plant, but they forgot that all our scriptures have already given the evidence that whatever we got, you know, this was a very important part as well. Uh, one of the, you know, one of, there are a lot of legends about the existence, how this plant came into existence. My favorite one being uh, in Shiv Puran when there was churning of the ocean happened uh, happening and uh, the nectar came out even humans the earth is of humans right so the gods and demons fought, fought for the nectar so did the humans and when they demanded nectar that is when shiva said you cannot digest this i'll come back in a form of seed with the last drop of this particular plant or with the particular uh, nectar and you can have that and that is when this plant grew the, the seed was uh, the seed sprouted out of the last drop of the nectar and at that particular time obviously it was the era of the gods the plant grew up instantly and he pulled the leaves and he started putting it on his neck why because he had just drank halahal which is actually the poison which came out before the nectar so my point over here is something which is so in sync with our history with our culture with our civilization with our health system why is it that it was taken away just because we could grow it in our backyards and save ourselves our land our animals and everyone well i'm hoping that this video opens up your eyes and probably you would also become one of the voices of cannabis just how we all are namaste